Section 3, Basic Best Practices. 3.1, PEP 8 and Writing Readable Code. We're going to look at spaces and tabs, as well as Python's expected code layout and naming conventions. PEPs or PEPs. PEPs, which stand for Python Enhancement Proposals, are the documents that out establish standards within the Python community. Most PEPs describe new features for Python or Python's standard library, but a few of them are more nebulous. PEP 8 is one of those. It tells us what the Python community considers to be well-written, readable code. The very first rule that PEP 8 introduces is that the rules of PEP 8 should only apply when they make our code easier to read. If we're working on a project that was already written to a different coding style, we should use that project's style for new code. If we're writing code where the PEP rules don't make sense, or somehow make the code harder to read, we should ignore them. As Guido Van Rossum, the creator of Python, has noted, code is read more often than it is written. It should always be written in a way that promotes readability. When programmers read code, we look at how it's intended to tell us how code blocks are nested. But most other programming languages use actual symbols to tell the parser where the blocks begin and end. Encoding the same information in two different places is a violation of the basic best practices of programming in any language, so Python omits the beginning and end block markers and uses the indentation to inform the parser as well as the programmer. There is one problem that arises from that, though. There are different ways of encoding indentation in a text file. We could use space characters or tab characters or even a combination of both, or even some other non-printing characters from elsewhere in the Unicode spectrum. <laughs> the code we're looking at right now mixes spaces and tabs, which in Python 2 is valid but a terrible idea, and which in Python 3 is a syntax error which raises a tab error exception. I've configured the editor to highlight tab characters so we can easily see which ind indentation comes from spaces and which comes from tabs. To see why mixing tabs and spaces is of no good, even when it's allowed, all we have to do is change the tab width. Even though the indentation looked good before, now it's clearly wrong. And to the compiler and parser for Python, Nothing has changed at all. There's no ambiguity if all the indentation comes from tab characters, so using only tabs is valid even in Python 3. However, it is the recommendation of PEP8 and the Python community that we always use exactly four spaces to indicate one level of indentation. Any halfway decent programming editor can insert those spaces for us when we press the tab key. There are several more recommendations which we're going to go through here quickly. The code on screen right now demonstrates almost all of the PEP8 formatting recommendations, and I'll leave it on screen while I talk us through them. PEP8 recommends that a single line of code should not exceed the width of 79 characters. While this is consistent with displaying the code on a standard text mode interface of 30 years ago, the primary reason for this rule in the modern world of wide screens and resizable windows is that it helps with reading. Even in contexts that have nothing to do with programming, layout designers prefer to limit line width. Import statements should be placed at the top of the file, with standard library imports first, then third-party imports, then imports from other modules within the same project. There should be a blank line between each group of the imports. Classes and functions at the top level should have two blank lines separating them. Methods within a class should have one blank line separating them. Within a function, or method, blank lines should be used to indicate separation of conceptual groupings of code. Don't insert extra spaces before or after parentheses, brackets, or braces. And don't insert spaces before commas or colons. Always put a single space on either side of binary operators. And don't put more than one statement on the same line. Comments should be written in a human language, using that language's correct grammar. Preferably, that language would be English if you're going to allow your code out into the wild, because that language is common to the majority of Python programmers. Comments should also precede the section of code they describe and be indented to the same level. Every public module, class, function, or method should have a properly formatted doc string. We'll look at what properly formatted means for doc strings in video 4 of this section. Let's move on to talk about picking names for variables, functions, and methods. Let's move on to talk about picking names for variables, functions, methods, classes, modules, packages, and so on. The overriding rule of Python naming conventions is that the naming style for an object should be, make it plain how the object is used, not what the object is. That means, for example, that a factory function, which produces new objects, should be named as if it were a class, because the usage case is the same as if it were a class. 
Packages and modules should have reasonably short names consisting entirely of lowercase letters and, in the case of modules, underscores. Classes should be named with a capitalized first letter and capitals at the start of every new word within the name. This is sometimes called camel case. Exceptions should be classes, and so they should also follow the naming convention for classes, but the last word of their name should be the word error. Functions, methods, instance variables, and global variables should all be lowercase, with underscores separating words. If they are meant to be internal rather than part of the public interface, their names should begin with a single underscore. The first parameter of an instance method should always be named self. Constants should be written in all capital letters with underscores separating the words. And that's it for PEP8 and the formatting rules that most Python programmers expect other people's code to follow. So, PEP8 is online at python.org slash dev slash peps slash pep dash 0008. The legacy in that URL has been supplanted since I created this slide. The number one PEP8 guideline is don't follow it slavishly. Use it when it makes your code easier to read. Don't use tab characters for indentation, ever. Just use four spaces. The PEP8 guidelines on the use of blank lines and spaces make a big difference in code readability. And the conventions about the use of capital letters convey a lot of information and should not be disregarded lightly. In the next video, using virtual environments to create a stable and isolated work area.